got some yellow paint I just pulled it out of the brush and then I'm just going to tap into that see that just tap into it the bristles of your brush should be open and then I'm just going to come up in here and just gently touch with some of that yellow this is for the leaves that's it you need quite a bit of colour leave some of the white showing as well because these leaves will have some sunlight glistening off of them you just put the yellow in first turn the brush over every now and again we're just going to have a layer of leaves that come through to about there different layers actually because there's going to be some rocks and stuff in between them. Right and then the exact same thing just tap into that and I'm going to do the exact same thing over this side Get that trees even there if you go over it like so so easy to repair don't matter try and leave some of the white in there though don't just cover all the white up and that's going to come running right through this whole area and it's just stippling with this tap and pull away, don't tap and slide tap and pull away, it's a really important part of stippling if you tap and slide you'll never get the desired effect you'll always just kill that sharpness nice and patient, I want to put a bit on this side we have a pathway coming down the centre. So put that down to about there. Being wider towards us. There, that's coming good. Now I've got some vermilion. So I need to get the tiniest amount of vermilion and tap that now into the yellow. And what I'm chasing is quite a reddit orange. Sometimes nice to do it with this, then to do it with the, uh, the sienna, the dark sienna, uh, burnt sienna. See that? These lovely, lovely colours that you get. Just use the corner of the brush sometimes and just tap it out in. Make it look like some red leaves have fallen off. This lovely orange colour. Now I'm going to get some burnt sienna as well. And put some burnt sienna down there. So I'm going to get the bright red and burnt sienna and yellow. So there we go. Allow that to go in there and look like little leaves on the floor. Some areas you'll have thicker areas of leaves than others. Now I'm just going to use the straight burnt sienna and then just here I'm going to touch some of that in. There. That's it. Use yellow ochre in with this as well, which I will be doing. Lovely effect as you the yellow ochre. I'm 
the knife stuff in between this row which will actually upset your eye a bit and it'll stop all it'll make all this have layers and give it depth. Now we've got straight burnt sienna. starting to come. You can get a little bit of a bright red every now and again because there's a, a tree up here just with some bright red leaves on. Just straight red. General, general. A lot of them have fallen just under that tree in my mind. There's one have a lot of red leaves as well as the yellow. No, you're not happy with like that little area there. I'll just end up turning it into a rock. See like that. Just get some. There you go. I know it's going to be a rock now. Same up there where I got that dark. I'll put a rock there. A few little boulders and stuff is what I want. So the dark sienna yet again. Gorgeous tones in this all the way through. Nature's really vibrant at the moment. If you go out there, check it out. It's really, really lovely and vibrant. Dark sienna. Sometimes you can even get a bit of the black, uh, the brown, sorry, the dark brown, and you can just come in and have a few different layers. Where the shadows and stuff. So I'm just using the burnt umber with the bright red. Burn some burr, pull it through, get some bright red, pull that through, see how, and then just tap into that. And then just here and there you have to create areas where there's like shadows and stuff in the woods. If you use the top edge of it, just like that sometimes. Shadows just down in there. When you're coming closer to you as well, it's better if you've got more paint on your brush because when you're just touching in here, it'll leave better indications of leaves and stuff in there. See that? Don't kill all the darks, all the light areas. you've got a few contrasting dark areas for the shadows I'd say that I suggest that there'd be a darker one around the base of that tree 
Okay, so I'm just going to use that same colour now over in this area and just put a few shadows in over here. One area for the shadow. Just in there. Just in the light areas, sometimes put that darker colour just gently over the top, like so. That'll give you a lovely indication of lots and lots of leaves. We'll put some yellow ochre over this as well. But this is this dark is quite important, so straight Van Dyke brown and red together. These shadows really help exaggerate all the, the light areas, the highlighted bits. It really helps to, with that. See, I'm just going over them trees. I'm totally ignoring them, basically. Right, so now we've got this pathway coming in, and there's going to be leaves on it. There's no doubt about that, but what I want to do first, just... Some more brown out. Brown and red is what I'm going to use. Just the same brush, same colour. Brown, red, both sides of the brush, and then just in here, I'm going to actually paint in some of that colour. There we go. But into the edge, I'm going to actually stick a little bit. See that? Just under the edges. So in there I want it to be that lovely colour. I think this colour really works well in autumn paintings. And that's just going to vanish off is that pathway. It's going to disappear right down there. The edges, again, you can just tap. Remember we're using acrylics here, so they do dry extremely fast. So get the, the main bulk of what you're doing in first, just like that. And I want it's this pathway to go wider as we go along. So it's going to go more into it as you go. But don't leave the lines in, blend it quite softly. There we go. It. Now over the top of that, I'm just going to use some white mixed with the same colour. There we go. Just some straight white mixed with the same colour that we've been using. It's a lovely reddy brown, you see that? I'm just loading it on one side of the brush. And then with the flat of the brush, don't want much detail back in there, but I do up in here. So with the flat of the brush now, I just come along and let it let it break over the top of that. Just let it break that colour. You've got a lot of paint on there, and it'll just give you a lovely, little effective halfway going on in there and then we'll paint some more leaves over this there don't kill all them darks leave a lot of them showing through see that as well just on the end of there just use a bit of white One more time through the light colour. You can even put some little details in 
the foreground just with the side of the brush. Let that light colour mix into the dark. That's it. Just give some lovely little indications. So much fun to do this though. You're going know, to enjoy it. Right, and then also what I want to do is just again, like I said, tap on edges. I'm just going to go back now to the colours I was using for this, the yellow. And I'm just stippling into the yellow. And then just up in here, and just start touching some of these yellow leaves slightly over the path because that's the way it would be and the red ones as well some orange more than likely going to be a lot of them on this path especially with the dark sienna and that I'm just going to go back to the dark brown and a bit of red more red than brown more red than brown and then into the, where I put the yellow I'm just going to actually touch a little bit of that red here and there so there's a few little red leaves on there not just yellow. Sometimes you have to bash your brush out a little bit to get the bristles to open properly for you. Actually go back in and paint a few individual leaves as well. That's cool. You are then just going over the path. See that? Just in there. It's <coughs> a nice little pathway that we got coming in. So I'm just going to use a little filbert brush so um, back to the the browns I'm just going to paint a little rock in there a bit highlight for that just a little rock a bit, a bit darker underneath. So I'll just do that and put a bit dark under there. There we go. Now, I know I want that dark again, and then light on one side, dark on the back. I want to come in here and put a couple more rocks in. Really dark underneath. If it stops flowing for you, add a bit of water. Always going to help. And underneath it, just stuff them leaves right at the base. And then maybe there's a small one. Just at the side of it, there. It's a bit bigger than I wanted it. So, just put another one in front. Just there. 
and layers and layers and layers of these stones. to have one here. Need more wide. Change the shapes of them all the time. dark underneath it. I like to do that and get the top edge and then come back and some more highlight to the stone. It'll blend with the dark. Just into it. Definitely want some more black in there. Bigger shadow just behind it. That's coming on nicely. And there's just a little one there. Little one there, just the dark. Little one there, the edge of path. So you sometimes just do them with the dark like this. And then just go back and highlight them later. I like to do it in, in one file too, most of the time. You gotta be persistent with them. But always pull them off first time, every time. Right, and then back with some highlight colour. Take some highlights on them. soft. Now I'm going to do the same thing over at this side, I'm going to do some more dark, up the light, and then I've got the biggest one there. Plenty of highlight on the top of that one. A couple more just to the side of it. While that's actually drying, <coughs> just over in there, I might just come back and put a bit more highlight on the top of that. So 
zoom on this one I'm just gonna highlight it a bit there and then put some dark underneath. It's important to have that dark. I've got a bit of that colour on there, I'm just going to go back in it with this corner part. Put a little bit more of a highlight on that. You see stuff, you see as you go, you just see little things pop up in your mind. I'm back into my brown and black again. Tiny bit of water added to it. And uh, just where I've made them. little marks on the trees which when we come back and paint over that just in there Nice little indications as well of like all of the little grooves and stuff that you get in the back. You have to look closely. Right. Now I want to actually make that a bit wider just there. A tree. Blend that in nicely. Same up here on this tree. I'll bring it down through. Now we'll highlight on one side. That with your darks behind that. If you go over slightly, you can just wipe it out. Try and keep it behind it. There. So I want some highlights, but it doesn't need to be crazy. Right. Half of all this one's going, it's going really good. A lot of fun. I'm just going to paint this a bit fat now at the top. Just up here. More like so. So you can change your mind at any time. Just have a general idea in your mind what you want at first. Because it can always be changed. I always do it. I wanted it to be wider. So I'm just going to use a bit of dark. Just in the centre of that. So it's got a shadow and the highlights will be out towards the edges of the tree and the darker there in the centre. 